more can I say? Top billing. Top. All right, Eagles fam. Man, I think I have a new number one in the clubhouse for OC, and that will be one Kellen Moore. Now, you're going to have some people poo-poo this, right? And obviously so. I'm pretty sure most people were making fun of him somehow when he was a Dallas Cowgirl, and that goes without saying. However, you cannot knock the hustle, right? Because that man was getting it in with the Dallas Cowboys, turnovers aside, I believe if he could produce the type of stuff that he was doing in Dallas out here, because uh, you look right here, man, uh, he does not come short of some really good accolades. More coordinated a Dallas offense that was the NFL's best in 2021, leading the league in total offense, 407 net yards per game, and a scoring offense of 31.2 points per game during his first season as offensive coordinator in 2019. More unit led the league with 431 total net yards per game, which was 10th best in single season performance in NFL history and best by any offense since Denver's 2013 record setting unit with my man Peyton Manning out there, right? In four seasons as OC, Moore's unit ranked number two in the NFL in total offense with 391 net yards and 27.7 points per game. Fourth best passing offense you already know this bill right there. So the reason why I like him because right, I've now we've seen that Gerard Johnson also, if not interview, will be getting an interview. I don't believe they'll go with a first time play caller again. Not in a pivotal year to where I don't know if you can really read the tea leaves, but I can. If it doesn't go well for Coach Sirianni, he's done. Cook, toast. He's out the door. He cannot rely on somebody learning on the job. Now, I talked about Cliff Kingsbury. I like Cliff Kingsbury. A little mm, light in the loafers, but <laughs> wait, hold on. Is that the right term? <laughs> right, A little light on, on rushing the ball, right? But guess what? If you interview him, you interview Gerard Johnson, you interview Kellen Moore, that's a trend to me. It's a trend that you definitely want to be a passing outfit, if anything. Now, I suggested a guy like Greg Roman, probably not going to happen there. Uh, I've heard him going places with your man Jim Harbaugh, so obviously he will replace Kellen Moore as the OC, but that is to, you know what I'm saying, That's, we don't know that yet. We also talked about Eric Bieniemy, who's definitely on the same lines uh, with the passing, but he hasn't gotten an interview yet, so I can probably drop that right there. He will be my number one choice just because that's my man right there. Kellen Moore, though, tons of experience, comes with a ton of accolades, even more so than the Cliff Kingsbury, right? And <laughs> matter of fact, well, let's check some of this out right here. Like we always do about this time, let's go to the trusty run-pass ratio machine here, and we see the L.A. Chargers at 59.5% passing. So only 40.5% running. You know Coach Sirianni is already on the nipples. He's tweaking his nipples. He's extra excited about the ability to pass that much. Especially with somebody with those type of accolades that has a ton of play calling experience, right? So now the thing what I like about Moore is um, the year before that when he was in Dallas, uh, they were on a little bit of a switch up. Check this out right here. You can see Dallas right here, 51% passing, 48.9% run. So he was a lot more balanced in Dallas in 2022 there. And of course, they still were doing that thing. All right, let's go back one more year. We have 2021 Dallas, and he fell back off the wagon. 57.8% pass, Sirianni's happy again, right? So now, the reason I'm not totally mad if this is the direction they go in as far as the passing, which it seems like if you keep interviewing guys who are on this type of time, you know what I mean? It's only, oh, it's only so many times you can pee on me and then tell me it's raining, right? Right, pause, gotta pause that for all R. Kelly people out there. Now listen, but 
if you're going with a risk averse defense, which of course Vic Fangio's defense is, you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with the pass on offense. I feel right. Usually, when you have those Rex Ryan, Wink Martindale type schemes there, where you're really getting after it, the best complement to that is probably a run game. You want to slow down, give those guys a chance to catch their breath because they're out there firing on all cylinders, being extremely aggressive. This will be the exact opposite, right? You can get them back on the field and let them play 25 yards off the ball at cornerback on a first down, on a first and 10. <laughs> on, a, on a fourth and one, you could put your cornerbacks 13 yards off of the wide receivers in a Vic Fiangio defense, right? But listen, let's check out some of these concepts. This alone makes me want them to hire Kellen Moore. This is 21 personnel, so pro personnel, old school, looking like my boy Coach Reed back in town. Man, who is this right here? John Ritchie? You got John Ritchie and Brian Westbrook here? You get under the center right there, under the center from my boy Donovan McNabb, my all-time favorite player, into nothing, right? So don't look at how the results are derived. We're just looking at some of the stuff that he likes to do, some of the formations and everything like that. Y'all know we can rock with something like this because everybody – Keep crying about Jalen Hurts being under center there. But listen, the Chargers got that doo-doo butter offensive line, so it was kind of hard to even really see what they were going about, especially going against them Jets, baby, the New Jersey Jets. Jets was giving it to them boys like you wouldn't believe. Folks, all right, here we go under center again. He's always working with motion. You get that back to the basket play. Ash fake. He's shooting it downfield here. Oh, you got your boy. Amar Sauce Gardner right there, but look at that double motion, right? Shot him in motion just to shoot him back across the field, right? I didn't get it all the way, but you can see right there, shot him across the field just to see what they were doing, and most <laughs> most likely on the back end, the Jets stay in that zone, right? Vertical zone, back to the basket play action fake here. As you can see, multiple breaches, a pocket collapse in here. Uh, Kellen Moore was hamstrung, right, with a poor offensive line in L.A. there, but I uh, mean, he'll get aggressive down the field. As we know, you don't get the number one offense in those kind of crazy uh, yardage records with being uh, conservative. So he's definitely not that. One of the things that I'm paying attention to um, when I'm reviewing the film of these offensive coordinators is an answer for the heat, right? Yeah, the Jets here, they was heating their ass up like an ironing board. And check this out right here. It's looking like a miscommunication. They pointed it out. You can saw You saw where... Most of the pressure was coming from. You got two guys off coming off the ball here. Quentin Williams coming off the ball unblocked. So that's where you would tie that into, right? That's where you would shoot your sight just there. And you would want to see somebody flash here. Looks like Keenan Allen kind of got the message there. Herbert threw off his back foot. And you can see right there. Um, without the miscommunication, man, he probably hits him and he's probably going somewhere somewhere upfield so the answers there because this didn't seem to be many answers there for any type of blitzes uh with the eagles last year shit was crazy to watch this play gets stopped before it can get going however we're just looking at the concepts here if he's the pick we would do a deep dive into it but for now man stuff like this would really get me excited paul you got this look it's like a a, a pitch crack tosser so you get that pitch out right here, but you get an influence block. John Franklin Myers up here charging hard. He gets influenced in, right? And then you see him working nub side right here. So this is balanced out, right? Four men to the left, four men to the right, and you get him out leverage right before the snap. He's working with a lot of motion here, but a lot of it's short motion. See this right here? Influence. Well, look at that. Oh, that would have been hard. You get the safety crashing down here. So it's essentially three on three. If he makes one guy miss, he could possibly be out, out 88 out the gate with the jaw, man. You see that? Having to get this man running the alley right here against the running back. That's a tough tackle right there. If he's able to defeat that and then you get uh, Quentin Johnson here getting up to Sauce Gardner. Get out that space, man. Imagine someone like Philly Flyer, DeAndre Swift in that. Last one right here. I got a dip, but we'll get back into it here soon. I, I love the motion series, of course. Great way to get the tight end out here, kind of leveraged out in space uh, with him going across the formation. It could be a little smoother the way they did this, though, uh, but the results are there. Being able to get 
your tight end slash H back out there. And right here, influence block, he had to kind of uh, make do with that here. But you get a guy like that out there and you get defensive backs trying to tackle him, someone like Dallas Goddard would absolutely destroy these type of concepts. And it's coming off of, you saw that? It's coming off of a bluff. Looks like it could be some type of quick zone, stretch zone there, bluffing that right, right there. And then he's bluffing himself as well, acting like he's going to do a cross formation block. But then, of course, he leaks out right behind it. So Herbert had to kind of shake Franklin Myers loose right there. But look at all that airspace and opportunity. And he makes the most of it right there. Broke a tiger for my boy CJ Mosley, too. Ooh, multiple. Him and Quincy Williams. That's hard. All right, man. So I'm uh, I've <laughs> I've talked myself into it, right? If there's clearly wanting to go down this passing road, um, we're gonna have to just take it how it comes, right? You get it how you live. So if it's Kellen Moore, Cliff Kingsbury, it's all good. I see. I see a path to victory, right? I see a way that they can win this in the end. I also could see it be a complete failure, and then that be the end of Coach Sirianni and we in next year's coaching search class, right? When this year's coaching search class is thick, so hopefully next year will be thick. But hopefully it doesn't go that route. Uh, we get it all together, and we go ahead and get to that Super Bowl next year and win it, all right? Let me know, though, uh, what you think about your boy Kellen Moore. I know we're going to hear all types of – all types of – uh yeah, scuttlebutt when it comes to Kellen Moore there. But I think he's super talented. I loved watching him when he was at Boise State. They used to go in and beat the big dogs. I remember them beating Georgia. Uh, he was a really good football player too. So great football mind, young cat like that. Uh, you never know. Shit, he could end up. I'm surprised he's not a head coach already, but he could end up being the coach of the future. He calling his own plays. So all right, let me know though. Your boy Jersey Murph, shout outs to everybody out there. Much love. Make sure you're sharing the content, of course. Bury the lead again. Make sure you share the content, social media message boards and all that. Make sure you're supporting the channel and make sure you support the, the sponsors when you see them as well. All right? Salute.